Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Good Friday service here at Trinity. For us in our tradition, Good Friday is a part of three days that are really one service. The service begins on Monday, Thursday with our reflection on the Last Supper and on Jesus' command of service, continues into Good Friday, where we remember Jesus' crucifixion, his passion, and his love for us, and ends then on Easter morning with the resurrection of our Lord. This service ends in silence as we wait for the resurrection on Easter. The center of our worship service tonight will be our prayer cross. Uh, we celebrate what's called tenebrae, which will be, dis which will be uh, defined and described during the worship itself. So let us begin our worship together. This is a day of evil things, Lord. The worst that all of the powers of evil ever could accomplish was focused on this day and on your cross, and there unleashed in all of its wickedness. Therefore, it is a day of dread. And yet, throughout all of the years that intervene, we call this day of evil tidings Good Friday, a day to take our fears and to cast them away, as far as you have cast away that most dreadful thing of all, eternal death. You saw us in our poverty and gave us freely of your righteousness. Lord, let the steady message of this day make firm our hearts, that we may face whatever evil comes our way on any day, trusting in the merits of your death. Amen. O oh God, is this your son, Jesus, hanging on the cross? The one who healed the sick, taught us how to live in your ways, proclaimed the coming of your reign, the one who was to share fully in your glory and sovereign rule? Is it through this dying one, from this cross, that you assert your reign? So this is where you reign. You, giver of life, suffering, renewing, claiming dominion. Here, where the power of death would force its way. Here, at this hospital bed, where someone is dying of the COVID virus. Here, amidst the wreckage of the accident, where children, their bodies crushed, struggle to live. Here, in the welfare office, where those who wait are measuring their hopes. Here, in these tents, where refugees mourn for homes they have fled. Here, in our communities, where teenagers struggle against drugs and gangs. Here, in our world, where people die because of the color of their skin. Give light to our vision, O God, that we may discover you our creator, amidst this groaning creation. Stir faith in our hearts that our tongues may sing and knees bend before the exalted one who suffers. Give strength to our love that where life struggles to prevail, we would bring your renewing spirit. We pray as we would live. In the name of the one whose power is shaped as a cross, Jesus our Christ.
God who shares our most painful hours. At Cana, Jesus turned water into wine. At Calvary, Jesus turned blood and agony into joy. We haven't begun to understand. Perhaps we never will. How is pain transformed into joy? We don't know. One thing we are beginning to see, there's no way to follow Jesus and play it safe. Please give us courage to live with the risk of Good Friday faith, the risk Jesus took for us. Amen. Christ is the light of the world. As we observe the lighted candle, let us remember these words from the Gospel according to John. The true light that enlightens every person was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to bear witness to the light. Many of the events that surround the last days in the life of Jesus Christ are shrouded in darkness. In the fourth century, a solemn observance known as Tenebrae was celebrated. The church is brightly lit at the beginning of the Tenebrae worship. By the end of the worship, there is total darkness, except for the light that symbolizes Jesus Christ, the light of God's love. The word Tenebrae means shadows in Latin. So this becomes a worship of shadows. The gradual extinguishing of the lights and the candles is symbolic of the flight of the disciples and friends of Jesus and the resentment of the world leading to that final isolation of Jesus on the cross. As we see the story unfolding, we are reminded of our own falling away and the consequences of separation from God. At the conclusion of the worship, a light shines from the altar, the symbol that the meaning of the cross is fulfilled and that the light of God's love can never be extinguished. After the Lord's Prayer, the worship is over. There can be no benediction until Easter morning. The Last Supper. The Passover day finally arrived. This was a national Jewish holiday to celebrate the night so long before when the Israelites escaped from Egypt. The angel of death killed all the oldest boys in each Egyptian family that night, but he passed over the houses with lamb's blood on the door. It was because the angel passed over. In this last year of Jesus' life, Passover came and Jesus gave instructions to his disciples about where they would hold their dinner. In the evening, Jesus arrived at the appointed place with his disciples, and they all sat down for what was to be their last supper together. And Jesus told them, I have looked forward to this hour with deep longing, anxious to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat it again until what it represents has occurred in the kingdom of God. Later, as they ate the Passover supper, Jesus said to them, One of you sitting here with me will betray me. He meant that one of his disciples would tell the Jewish leaders where he was, and this would enable them to arrest Jesus when the people weren't around to protect him. The, the disciples were very surprised and sad when they heard this. They looked at each other, wondering which one he was talking about. Peter motioned to John, who was sitting next to Jesus, to find out what Jesus meant. So John asked Jesus, Lord, who is the one who will do such a terrible thing? It is the one I will give this piece of bread to when I have dipped it in the dish. Then Jesus gave it to Judas Iscariot and said to Judas, What you are going to do, do it quickly. The Agony in the Garden 
After the Passover supper, Jesus and the eleven disciples made their way toward the Mount of Olives to rest and to pray. On the way, Jesus gave them his last instructions, and they were saddened at his words. Peter was particularly sad. Filled with love for Jesus, he said, Lord, why can I not follow you even now? I would lay down my very life for your sake. I say to you, Peter, that this very night before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me thrice. Peter protested, as did all the others. But Jesus remained silent until they reached the Garden of Gethsemane at the foot of the mountain. Peter, James, and John entered the garden with the Lord while the others waited outside. Jesus then said to the three, My soul is filled with sorrow, a sorrow that almost kills me. Stay here and watch while I pray. He went a little further into the trees and threw himself upon the ground and cried out, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me but thy will, not mine, be done. So great was Jesus' agony that drops of sweat like drops of blood ran off his face onto the ground. During this agony of the Lord, the three disciples fell asleep. And when Jesus returned to them, he said to Peter, Could you not watch one hour with me? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He returned to his prayer and cried aloud to heaven, My father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink it, thy will be done. Once more he found Peter, James, and John asleep. So he returned to his prayers without awakening them. The third time he returned to the three, he found them still asleep. Looking down at them, he said, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour has come when the Son of Man will be betrayed into the hands of sinners. But hearing a sound in the distance, he said to the sleeping disciples, Rise up and let us be going. The traitor is here. the betrayal, and the arrest. Then Jesus and the disciples went towards the entrance to the garden, where they could hear the clanking of armor and see the flickering of torches. And there they found soldiers from the Pharisees and Judas. And Judas, seeing Jesus, rushed forward and embraced him. Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? As the temple guard came forward to seize him, Jesus advanced to meet them. Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. The Denial. All of the disciples fled except Peter, who followed Jesus and the soldiers to the home of the high priest. And in the courtyard, one of the maids who worked for the high priest noticed Peter. She looked at him closely and announced, You were with Jesus, the Nazarene. I don't know what you're talking about. And just then, a rooster crowed. Someone else saw Peter standing there and began telling the others. There he is. There's that disciple of Jesus. Peter denied it again. A little later, others standing around began saying to Peter, You are one of them, for you are from Galilee. And Peter began to curse and swear. I don't even know this fellow you're talking about. And immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. 
And suddenly Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me thrice. And Peter began to cry. The trial. The high priest and the scribes agreed that Jesus should be put to death, but the land was ruled by the Romans, and so no man could be put to death without the consent of the Roman governor. So the enemies of the Lord took him to the governor, Pontius Pilate. After questioning Jesus, Pilate went to the mob and said, I find no evil in this man. But the enemies of Jesus persisted. So Pilate was forced to decide for or against Jesus. Pilate said to the priests and the scribes, Listen, you have brought this man to me as one who is leading the people into evil, and I have found no evil in him, nor has Herod. Now I will order that he be beaten with rods and set free, for you know that it is the custom to set one prisoner free at the time of the feast. This was indeed the custom, but the mob set up a great clamor and cried for Barabbas, a thief and a murderer who had been set free instead. Then Pilate said, What then shall I do with this man, Jesus? Crucify Crucify him! him. Let Let him him die die on on the the cross! cross. Crucify Crucify him! him. Send Send him to the the cross. cross! The crucifixion. Jesus Jesus was led to his place of execution, a hill outside of Jerusalem called Golgotha, or Calvary in the Roman language. It meant the skull place. Carrying the cross on which he was to die, Jesus started toward Calvary, guarded by a detachment of Roman soldiers and followed by a multitude of people. When the procession reached the appointed place, Jesus was nailed to a cross between two criminals who were being hanged with him. And the soldiers gambled for his clothing, throwing dice for each piece. The crowd watched, and Jesus said, Father, forgive these people, for they know not what they do. The Jewish leaders laughed and scoffed. (laughs) He was so good at helping others. Let's see him save himself if he really is God's chosen one, the Messiah. The soldiers mocked him too and called to him. Hey, if you are the king of the Jews, then save yourself. the death. Then Jesus said, Father, I commit my spirit to you. And with those words, he died. By now it was noon, and darkness fell across the whole land for three hours until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and the curtain secluding the holiest place in the temple was split apart from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks broke and tombs opened. The soldiers at the crucifixion were terribly frightened by the earthquake and all that happened. They exclaimed, Surely this was the Son of God. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes it causes me to 
tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you Tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus the Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the 